breath, there's the one and the high, because it's way up high. But down here, listen to it in the G. You hear that? So I blocked that out, and just to heck with that three down there. I don't want a three on the lower. Just go right to the... I, I'm blocking it out with my, with my finger here. I'm leaning... I'm leaning over onto this string here. I'm playing this string, but I'm leaning my finger over onto that string to mute it. That sounds kind of interesting. Okay, enough of that. So, to be a rock and roller, I'm going to play these two strings. Because we're eliminating the wimpy one, the three. We're going to the five. So this is one, five, one. And again, that's a modal. That's modal. Because I've eliminated the, the, the low three, too. I eliminated that. Eliminate it. Now I just lean. See how I lean my finger over a little bit? You see how I did that? Now you don't hear it. just happened I did not did you notice I did not move these fingers at all I just moved my these I moved my first and second finger over to the C position I'm also muting it again there's that three again but it's a little higher so it's not as bad. You see that one, 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 five, one at the top? Somebody says, uh, how are you? Well, I'm good. I'm good. Somebody says, how are you? And then it says, play the Beatle Piz. I'm not sure what the Piz is. The PLZ. Play the Beatles PLZ. I'm not sure what PLZ is, but uh, I'm sure you are going to tell me very soon. Uh, at any rate, so, um, oh, please. Play the Beatles, please. <laughs> Oh, I have been so busted. I don't know all the little things. You know, when my daughter texts me, she does a lot of those uh, abbreviations, and I'm going, what does all this mean? And I have to text her back going, honey, what does PLZ mean? Oh, please. Okay. Anyway, pretty funny. Pretty funny. So, uh, yeah, so, so back to this musical thing. Check this out. So we're, we're doing the rock and roll G. Now we're doing the rock and roll C. Now remember we talked about the relative minor? What if we did that one and still left our two fingers right here? Now let's do the A minor, which is the which is the relative minor of the four. Let's go to the five. I never moved these. Never moved them. I did all those chords. I did the the one. I did the minor six. I did the four. I did the minor. Two, which is the relative minor of, and then I went to the five uh, to get the. The only one that's not going to work on is the is the relative minor of the five, which is the minor three.
So, very cool if you want to be a rock and roller and have a lot of angst in your playing. That's one way to do it. If you're in the key of G. See, I used to hate the key of G because I hated that three up there. Not forsake me, oh my darling. You know, it's got that kind. Do not forsake me, oh my darling. You know. So, uh, but when I hit the, when I learned this, now we're talking. You know. I got a two sitting rambling, and I'm going to town, and I get my money. Gonna mess around. Gonna mess around. Gonna mess around. Not going downtown. Anyway, that's uh, that's you've been hearing me play that rock and roll G. Uh, this whole this whole thing that we're doing here. Oh, that's a nice one. It's a suspended nine. There's the there's the there's the eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, which is the same note as the one. The one and the eight are the same, then eight, nine. That adds, uh, uh, that, uh, that adds extra coloring, right? Voicings are very important. Now, I have no training whatsoever, but if somebody were here that were into jazz, they could teach you all the fantastic voicings and uh, color notes. That's one. I mean, I stumble on them because I got an ear for music. So I stumble on these things. So uh, that's, that's my little uh, music theory, chord theory thing for the day. And we also talked about um, inharmonic tones with our harmonic tones, which create tension and which are demanding to be resolved to a note that fits the chord. So I go, da, 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 ha, da, da. You know the note you want to hear, isn't it? So I always, I, I, I um, as a, uh, for me personally, I don't go very far at all with lyrics before I get a melody and some chords, because uh, the melody and the chords get me to actually wanting to finish the lyric, because I've got something fun on the guitar and fun singing. So now that I've got that fun thing, the melody and the chords, I'm dying to actually finish the lyric. For me, lyrics come come a little harder because I am very fussy about my lyrics. Uh, the great thing about music is that music goes directly to the heart. Is that on the side? No, it's on the side. <laughs> directly, it bypasses language which is spot on, I say, spot on. So, when we write the music, we go directly to the heart, which is lovely. We don't have to worry about music, about lyric, right away. So we get the emotion of the song. So we have the emotion, you know, 
I, I can choose an emotion, so it's just a little picky thing. Yeah, it's lovely. So now I can figure out what, I, what would I like to say about that? What do you say? So I'd like to say, do you try to switch chord voicings between the first and second verse? Sometimes, yes, you could do that. And what we're talking about now is setting up expectations, which so much of songwriting is. Setting up expectations, and you have two choices at this point. To deliver what they expect on the next thing that you play, or, number two, give them a little, what do we call it? Happy surprise, right? So, to answer your question about the voicing, as long as the voicing doesn't cause the listener to go, what was that? Then you're good, right? So if you want to do a, a slightly different voicing, yes, you can do that. And it'll change the emotion. So you have to be knowing what you're doing so that your new voicing in the second verse would be matching emotionally the lyric that you're saying out your mouth. Okay? So we want to make sure that they all fit together. Right? Now, you could do a different voicing, which would be really nice, like in a bridge. You know, like the bridge is towards the end of the song. Um, a typical chorus song is verse, chorus, verse, chorus. Maybe a bridge. You don't have to have one, but bridge. And last chorus, right? And then out. All right? So if you're going to play the bridge, which is towards the end of the song, <clears throat> if you're going to play the bridge... In the same chords as, say, like the end of the verse. Because the end of the verse could be really cool. It could have a pre-chorus, which is kind of an interesting chord pattern that you might create. Um, and we'll talk about that, pre what a pre-chorus is. But um, So you could voice that pre-chorus in a different way, which would create a different emotion. And that's what we're going for. You know, When we choose different voicings, we don't do it just to be clever. We do it to enhance the emotion of the song. We songwriters are slaves and to the resulting emotion. And I like to call it, for the sake, because I'm a commercial songwriter, I call it not just emotion, but compelling emotion. Yeah. So we're always going for, like we said, tell the truth and then lie. Tell the truth and then lie about it. Tell the truth. That is kind of interesting. And then lie about it and make it more interesting. Okay? Yeah. <clears throat> That's what we do. So the voicing thing, that could work. You know? That could work. Is there any other requests here? Let's see. Try to switch voicings between first and second. Yeah, okay, we answered that. Let's see. Is there another one? Learn more about the that's going to apply. Okay, good. All right. Tony, get it on. Tony, get it on. I got it on for you, Tony. That was a little request for Tony. Yeah, you know. I got a lump in my throat and I saw her coming down the aisle. I got the wiggles in my knees when she looked at me and squeezed a smile. There she is again, standing over by the record machine. Looking like a cover on a Model of a magazine. She's too.
too cute to be a minute over seventeen. She's in the mood. No need to break it. I got a chance. I'll take it. And she'll dance. Ooh, we're gonna make it. Come on, Queenie. Let's shake it. Hey! Go, 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 little Queenie. So that was a long getting it on. That was a long getting it on. That's an old Chuck Berry song. I don't know how old you all are out there in uh, in uh, video blog land, but I I know I look seventeen. But I'm forty two. Sixty-five. Seventy-five. Okay. I'm going to forget. Has that ever happened? This is between just you and me, right? Now, where were we? We were on the music thing, doing a music thing, doing a music thing. What else? Uh, oh, you know, and and, and on the um, on the guitar again, always going for the emotion. We talk about you know uh, the emotion when you put your capo way way up. You're changing the emo you're not just changing the sound of the guitar. You're changing the emotion. <laughs> but it also has a whole different emotional key of D. Uh, I just stole. I actually don't know how to play it. I'm learning how to play it as I am talking to you right now, live in my room. So I'm just learning. This. So I can take that feel and turn it into a song for me, you know? Hey Joe, play Hey Joe. <laughs> I don't know. Hey Joe, we go with a good head. Hey Joe, did you know that Jimi Hendrix played a half step down? I'm a full step down, so he he played. That's where he played. Hey Joe, where'd you go with that gun in your hand? I'd have to listen to the song, you know, and then I could copy it. I'm a, I'm what they call in the music business a chameleon. So I can hear a song and I can tell what chords are being played and then I can get on my guitar and I can play it. But I'd have to hear it first to know how to play Hey Joe. Um, I could make up my own Hey Joe. I could do that. I could go like, let's see. I love this chord progression. This is the, uh, the one minor, and I'm doing one minor with it. There's that. There's that thing again, the double thing, the double. It's a 
on the third fret, and then so I'm one of my favorite chords to go with that. That it's an E minor position, even though it's not E minor. It's whatever it is. Who cares? I always go by numbers and not chords. We could do. Um, we can go to the C, and I'm notice I'm still leaving that there. I'm not going to change that right at all. No, I'm not going to do it. So, whew. so I go, hey Joe, where you going with that gun in your hand? Hey Joe, where you going with that gun in your hand? Well, I'm going down. To see my old lady, I might shoot it down. I might shoot it down. Yes, I'm gonna see my old lady. I'm not sure if this is the right words. I'm gonna pull the trigger. I'm gonna make that girl suffer for all the wrong she done. That's where I'm going. That's where I'm going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so forth, right? So there's my version of Hey Joe. Yeah, that's what we songwriters do. We take a song and we try to make it ours, right? Make it ours. And I just made that song mine, you know? So I could actually write that down I write that down. Hey Joe, H E Y Joe, J O E, in. Uh, it's actually F. F minor. And I'll put uh, capo one, capo one. Yeah, and then I'll go minor, and then I'll go to, to C. So it's F minor to C, and that was the clue. That's what got it all started, was the F minor to C, right? F minor to C, F minor to C. Um, we can talk about um, one more item before I sign off today. Uh, let's talk about, like, um, we talked about how music can influence the lyric, so we start with our music, but what if we were to start with a lyric and didn't have any music yet, what would we do then? Uh, well, let's, let's, um, does somebody want to uh, give me a line, an opening line of a song? Do you want to do that? If somebody just type in uh, an opening line. You can just make up something, you know, like he came in through the bathroom window. Uh, well, let's, let's do a, let's do a, something that hasn't been done before. Are we going to get one here? Uh, I'm waiting. Come on, people. Give me a line. Type in something. I'm drinking my juice here. You guys going to give me a line? Nobody's going to give me a line? Okay, I'll, I'll make up one. Uh, let's say... Um, I'm going to write it down here somewhere. Let's say... Uh, Let's do a descriptive line because there's two kinds of writing. There's emotional writing and there's physical writing. So let's start with uh, let's start with a physical line, like um, she looked out the window and started to cry. All right. Uh, she. I'm just writing this down. Looked out the window. And started to cry. Now, um, we could say she looked out the window and started to laugh. <laughs> you know, she looked out the window and started to sing. 
right? Awesome ketchup. Awesome ketchup. Oh, awesome ketchup. Because she saw the coronavirus. Yes. 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 The coronavirus. Oh, somebody likes me. Let me, uh, Oh, not important. More coronavirus news. Not important. Not important. Okay. So, um, so I've got an opening line. She looked out the window and started to cry. So the first thing I want to do is is check out the rhythm of that line, right? Why? I know some of you are going, well, Rick, why check out the rhythm first? Because... It just so happens that rhythm is the most important aspect, element of songwriting entirely. Yeah, it really is. So getting your rhythm, figuring out the rhythm is really, really important. Let me give you an example. So, this is what I love about music. I love this thing I'm about to tell you. This is what I love about music. She looked out the window and started to cry. Okay, now check this out. The natural line rhythm of that is... Is this going to go right across the... Is that, is that the way you write... Is that going backwards to you? You want to go this way? So, she looked out the window and started to cry. Okay? That's the natural line with it. So, if I wanted to, I could go, um, now it's a sad, she looked out the window and started to cry, sad. So, uh, let's... Let's do a let's do E minor, all right. I'm actually doing E flat minor, but I'll get back to regular E so that in case somebody's got a guitar out there, they won't freak out. So she looked out the window and started to cry, right? So she looked out the window and started to cry. Now that I just used that, that was my favorite. I told you my favorite going E minor to C, E minor to C, okay? And that's the position, right? She looked out the window and started to cry. Ba, 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 da, 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 da. Or she looked out the window and started to cry. You do that, I just walked up from the E minor up to the G, which is the relative major. Ha! So we have opposites. If, we, if we're playing in a minor, we have the relative major going up three half notes rather than going down. So let's go up three half notes from E minor. One, two, three, that's G. Now let's play a G major. And I'm playing the rock and roll G major, of course, because I, Rick Beresford, I want to be cool, right? Cool, I'm cool. Any little thing to help this old dude be cool, we're going to use it, right? Okay, so. And there's many things I could do. I could, I could stay on there. She looked out the window and started to cry. I could do that. Stay on that chord. Looked out the window and started to cry. That's the minor four. So I'm, if I'm in a minor one, which is the E minor, what's the four of E? It's A. But we can play it A minor. She started to cry. So you look at the window and start to cry. cry. That's really sad because we're two minor chords. Look at the window and started to. Oh, the minor five. There's the one, there's the four, and there's the five. So minor one to the minor five. Oh, that's so 
Yeah, that's kind of Western, isn't it? She looked out the window, started to cry. Started to cry. Same note. Started to. And that this note fits this note. Cry, so I don't have to change. Now, because these are all minors, on the on the next section, I can use the major equivalent. I can use the relative major. So look at the window. Started to cry. Started to cry, but I don't know why. She grabbed a, she grabbed a little whiskey and started to dream. Started to dream all night long. Then I came home and I said, "Let's go dancing." I came home, so I made it happy, right? I went to the, I went to the relative major. And I came home and said, what have you done? What have you done? What have you done? What have you done? Girl, you drank all my liquor, didn't leave me none. Son of a gun, son of a gun. Now you got me crying. Now we're crying, crying together. She looked out the window and started to cry, started to cry, but I don't know why. Well, actually, he did know why, because she grabbed all his liquor and drank it. So he wasn't going to go out and be happy. I mean, you could start it with a happy thing, but you got to get back into the sad. Right? And uh, if you're wondering how I came up with all those chords that I was using on that song that I just clumsily wrote, it's because I started on the E minor. Well, the relative major of E minor is G. So I happen to know that the key of G fits really nicely with the key of E minor because it's the relative major. So I can use G, C, and D, along with E, with the, the, the minor E, the minor, I mean the minor one, the minor two, and the minor three. I can use G, C, and D, which are the happy equivalent, right? The happy equivalent to, um, to the minors. So I can manipulate the listeners emotions by the choice of my chords, right? Very cool. Is that not cool? That is so cool. Okay. Um, the next thing I want to show you is the thing that I was starting with, and I completely got loopy-looped off track. And, uh, you know, if I ever get off track, you're welcome to tell me, hey, what was that point you were trying to make 20 minutes ago? And you can remind me, and I go, oh, right, 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 okay. But luckily, today, my brain's working pretty good, and I remembered that I was going to show you something about putting music to a lyric. Now, we've got, she looked out the window and started to cry. Now, that's the natural line rhythm. I'm going to blow your mind right now. I don't know if you can see, but my eyes are wide open. Okay, you see that? Yeah. Blow your mind. Okay, now watch this. She looked out the window and started to cry. Now, music. Don't we love music? I can do this. I can do what I, what I personally call, this is my personal thing. I can do a forced line rhythm. So, she looked out the window, started to cry. So she looked out the window, and she started to.
to cry Yeah, she looked at that window And started to cry Started to cry I didn't know what was going on in her head I thought that girl was pretty near dead and the funny thing she said got me wondering, wondering. So the point I'm making is I can take any one of these words and preferably you want to pick an important word in this line. So I picked look because that's an important word. So I, I hung on look. She looked out the window started to cry started to cry little re repetition there it's another thing about songwriting is you can get to repeat stuff like if you're a poet and you wrote she looked at the window and started to cry it's hard for you to go she looked out the window and started to cry, started to cry. It doesn't, you know, it's, I guess for emotional sake, but that we can even take it farther. She looked out my window and started to cry, started to cry. Now, cry, that's called a melisma. Now, I had a melisma right here on my arm, right here, but they, they cut it out when I was three, and it hasn't bothered me since. Melisma, it's a weird word, it sounds creepy. And what it means is several notes on one syllable. So cry is a one-syllable word. We're going to melisma this mother. We're going to give it the old melisma. Cry. Now, I can melisma any one of these. She looked out the window and started to cry. Cry. See what I'm saying? I turned that one line into half a song <laughs> uh. by doing all that, right? So that's the great thing about music is you take a line that has a natural line rhythm. She looked out the window and started to cry. And you can go, she looked out the window ho, ho, and started to cry. Ha, 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 ha. Now, you would never say that. But with the music working, it suddenly makes sense. She looked out the window and started to cry. Started to cry and started to cry. Isn't that cool? That's one of the reasons why I love music. And you know, young songwriters, they have a tendency to forget. They have a tendency indeed. I'm dyslexic, I'm lysodexic, and so I went tendency, it's tendency. Young writers have a tendency to write natural line rhythm songs. So she looked out the window and started to cry. Looked out the window, I can't even do it the real way. She looked out the window and started to cry. She looked out the window and started to cry. Started to cry. So that's the natural tendency for beginning songwriters, rather than going, she looked at that window, started to cry, yeah, she looked out her window, yeah, started to cry.
I don't know what she's crying about But I wish I could help her out While she looked out her window She started to cry Yeah, see? So that's a wonderful thing about, about music Is being able to do that um, Yeah Yeah so uh, I think that's all I got uh, for now about music without, you know, digging down into the files of my cheat sheet notes. Speaking of cheat sheet, I'm creating a website. It's going to be called wikisongwriter.com. And it's going to have all the tricks of my lectures on that website. So as you are writing, you can go to this website if you're stuck and you need an idea, a concept, a writing, a songwriting concept, one of the elements to kind of spur you on, whether it be music or whether it be lyric, right? So that's going to be cool. I'm trying to learn how to get online and try to I'm trying to build a website. I'm doing research right now and like is it is it gonna be the Gator one or is it gonna be the iPage or is it gonna be the GoDaddy? You know, I'm checking it out because I'm gonna try to save some money. At the same time I want to do everything I want to do. So I'm still just doing that research. And I've bought the website. I own wikisongwriter.com. So, that's going to happen. It's going to be like the songwriter's cheat sheet is what it's going to be. It's going to have all these little clues, little ditties about song, the song elements and how to use them. So, you know how you go to wikirhymer.com? What? Oh, you don't know about wikirhymer? <laughs> I'm going to do you a favor wikirhymer.com this is what I'm going to tell you about it I'm just going to tell you one thing wikirhymer if you get the pro which I think is 10 bucks a year that ain't bad 10 bucks a year that ain't bad if you get the wikirhymer pro there's over a thousand rhymes for the word get ready get ready Love. You thought there was only about four, right? Wrong, Bucko. There's over a thousand rhymes for the word love. Now, and we're going to go over this another day, another day, another time. When we get into the rhyme thing, you know, we're going to talk about hard rhyme or perfect rhyme as opposed to soft rhyme hard rhyme or perfect rhyme versus soft or slant rhyme we're going to get into all that stuff right glove schlub i like the schlub thing that's good grub yeah see um awesome ketchup already knows what i'm talking about knows the tricks of the trade yeah man you're rocking awesome ketchup. You are rocking the bad house today. Yeah, so um, we're going to get into all that. But yeah, Wiki Rhymer is amazing. Uh, it's free if you want to use the free version. But man, you go deep, deep down into the soft rhymes when you when you buy the pro version. And so to me, it's worth 10 bucks a year. Uh, so, uh, and I know the guy that runs it is really cool. Uh, I will share this little antidote with you. It turns out that all the rhyming websites are all built from the same platform constructed by, I think it's the University of Pennsylvania. Went, went through the dictionary and made and, and, and phonetically mapped out every word in the English dictionary so that if you want own 
you hit a button and all the owns come up. They mashed it up. It's just a rough website and it's a free website that you can go on and use if you want to. To build your own rhyming dictionary, right? And they made it free. So uh, the guy that owns Wiki Rhymer, that's what he did. He went on. To, he went and got all this uh, data from the University of. It's either Philadelphia or Pennsylvania or someplace out there on the East Coast. And he built this Wiki Rhymer, and it's it's the best website there is for for rhyming for as a rhyming dictionary. And I also use thesaurus.com. Fantastic. Because you not only want to know the, you not only want to know the, the the equivalent words that are similar, but you also want to know opposites, and they give you on, on thesaurus.com they give you the opposites. So if you look up the word love, they'll give you, you know, like, adore, cherish, admire, and all that. But then they'll also give you the opportunity, if you want to, to go to the opposite, which is married for 30 years. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. Totally kidding. You can still be in love after 30 years, okay? My mm -hmm. sweetie and I are on 20 years, and we love each other more now than we did back in the day, right? Figure that one out. Figure that one out. That's right. And Awesome Ketchup sent me a little emo emoji. Not sure what that means. Ha, I'm telling Deanna. Oh! <laughs> Master. <laughs> no! No! Okay, go ahead. Would I be to create drama in my household? Hey, we're, you know, we're, what do you call it? We're commandeered here. So a little drama would be probably good. Liven us up, you know. You know, the makeup sex would be probably amazing. At any rate, uh, <laughs> can't get our teachers in trouble. Oh, can't get our teachers Yeah, yeah. No, we can't, no. Don't want to get our teachers in trouble. No, we don't. Oh, by the way, I know that you were, I know you want to know this picture right here that I'm holding up. We're holding that picture up. That picture right there. That picture is a painting by my very good friend and genius songwriter, singer, named John Goodwin. He's an amazing guy. You can't get his stuff. I don't think he's on any website, but he's got a ton of CDs, and he writes hit songs, and he does his own albums. And this was a painting that he did for one of his album covers, because he does his own albums. Oh, it's hard to do. There we go. Yeah, and that's Telly, my Telecaster. That's Telly. Hey, Telly. What's going on? Hey, buddy. You need to be played a little bit? Maybe after the show. We'll plug you in. We'll play you a little bit. Yeah. And then over here we got, we got, uh, that's uh, Epiphone, Epi, the 339. It's got the small body and the long neck. It's very cool. And then down here we have a baritone guitar. And then over here we have another guitar which I'm about to sell. This is a, a J45. Very nice. It's a studio model. It's a studio on it. Very cool guitar. Very nice. But I got this one with the cutaway and so I don't need that one anymore. So anyway, if you know somebody who wants to buy that guitar, just let me know. Okay. 
So that's my room. Oh, that's my couch. Yeah. And that's, that's pretty much it. So for today, I think we've done a good job of, of uh, plowing through, right? Plowing through some melody and chord ideas, right? And I'm not sure when I'm coming back, but they're going to tell me when I'm coming back. And when I come back, we'll talk about more of all these things. I'm going to show you the handout again. You see all that? That's a lot of stuff there. That is a lot of stuff. All right? So all that stuff will be on there. Uh, and if there's a way, if I can post that, oh, I'll post it. It'll be on my website when I get my website working. I don't want to crash, so I'm going to bring it, I'm going to pull it back because we crashed before. <clears throat> when I get my website, wikisongwriter.com, um, can you believe I got that? Can you believe it? I can't believe it. Seven ninety nine for the first year, eleven ninety nine after that. <laughs> so easy. So uh, when I get that up and running, you can see all those topics because all those topics will be on that website, right? So keep your eyes open for that website to pop up. In the meantime, I will see you again. All right. And Awesome Ketchup says I killed something. Okay. I don't know what it is, but... Oh, there we go. There we go. Awesome Ketchup sent, sent me a, a thing. Um, very nice. Thank you. Thank you, Awesome Ketchup. So, uh, until next time, we have a lot of things to go over. I mean, I'm not kidding. A lot of stuff. So... Stay tuned with your eyes, reading the screen, and uh, no telling when I'll come back. But when I do, I might be sober. <laughs> no, I'm sober now. I'm sober now. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I'm going to say goodbye, and thank you all for being here, and uh, I'm glad you enjoyed it. I, don't, I can't really tell exactly how many people are on here, but... Uh, you know, tell your friends, tell your neighbors, we're going to have some fun on this website, as you can see. I'm going to take it seriously in a very relaxed and kind of funny way, right? So you're going to learn a lot of stuff, but you're going to learn it kind of in my style. And that's kind of crazy, all right? So there you are. So I love you. Be good. Thank you for your incredible... Um, sacrifice to keep this country and the and the western way of life afloat we like where we are and we like what we do and uh, I was there I was on the USS Ranger CVA 61 out of Alameda California and I was in the Vietnam 67 68 so if anybody was in Vietnam in 67, 68, you would have to swim out to my aircraft carrier to sail in me. Or you could just be in the Navy and be come up side my ship and hop on and get on. You could do that too. And that's a whole other story. A whole other story. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I love you guys. I love you gals if you're out there be great if there were some gals out there and uh, and just keep checking in uh, I guess what happens is they post when I'm going to go on and maybe 1 o'clock is like uh, we can kind of nail that time down that slot down so you could put it on your calendar or if you all want to just tell me what's a better time I can do that too as long as it's sort of during the day I could do it anywhere from between 10 in the morning until like 5 in the afternoon. I could do any one of those times. So, you know, we're still steering the ship to try to figure out where the, you know, where the course is. So, I don't want to get in the other people's way too because we got some vets 
doing some other programs, you know, in some time slots too. So, anyway, we'll figure all that out, and I will talk to you again. And I'm I'm assuming I'm going to hit the stop streaming thing, and then I will literally go.